You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Daniel Hawkinson from the band Diablo Swing Orchestra. Their new album, Swagger and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole, comes out on November 2nd. Daniel, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to The Pit. No, thank you. Nice to be here. I think the first question I have to ask is just, a cock? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I would say definitely so. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. Uh, so then, now I like to get into just more of your origin story. I always like to start with people's origin stories. I imagine everyone is a superhero. So take me back to a young Daniel. What was around you? What was influencing you? I know you talked before about your mother being a, an aspiring opera singer and playing all sorts of different types of music around the house for you. Uh, what else was influencing you? What else was going on for you as a child? Uh, a lot of nature, I guess. I was uh, pretty much, I like to be outdoors. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's, if, do you mean like musical stuff or, or just in general? I guess just in general, like what, okay. what, what you think helped shape you. Yeah, well, the thing with me and, and, and music, it was kind of, for a very long time, it was a passive thing, as you said, from my mother. I, I wasn't that active with music until much, much later, until I turned like 15 or 16. But I, I, as you said, I always listened to it, and I got the education from her. But um, So I'm guessing in terms of influencing, it was the, the freedom you have as a, as a kid for imagination. The, the games you played and the, and the, the way you played, I, I could play for hours or imagining things. And also, I was into, I'm not sure if I, if I role playing. Is that the right role playing? Yeah, yeah okay. like like but well, with with dice and stuff. And you you, you like sit Dungeons around. and Dragons. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so, yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I, yeah, I remember sitting around the house and, and and playing that and just telling stories to my friends uh, hours for hours. So. Uh, I'm not sure that the actual, how to say, the lore or the, 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 the those kind of worlds oh, yeah, in, in a musical way, but 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 the, the way of using my imagination uh, and be creative it was definitely a, a learning experience for me, and that I could tell stories for other people and they would listen. I, I don't think anyone who has been a fan of you has ever really maybe considered that maybe Dungeons and Dragons would have been an influence on you. So I think we really just opened up the floodgates on something there. It's, it's really <laughs> cool. Do you have any interest in that anymore? I mean, obviously, it's a huge time investment. <laughs> no, 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 it was a long time ago. I, I, I did that. I mean, I, it, it kind of morphed into to uh, games instead, like 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 you know, PlayStation or computer games and stuff like that that, that follow me instead that I, it kind of moved into that and uh, nowadays i don't have time for anything so <laughs> <laughs> right so were you always just a player or were you ever a dungeon master uh, no no just a master I, I, I was the one telling the story so I, I i never actually played now when you say it myself oh wow so you've never actually played dungeons and dragons you've always been the dungeon master yeah, yeah, yeah that's correct that's so cool. Everybody out there, Daniel Hawkinson is a dungeon master. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I talked about that before, so yes. That's so At cool. least not in interviews. <laughs> well, maybe someday you'll get back into it. You know what you should do? <laughs> you should do the Diablo Swing Orchestra dice set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I, I may, maybe I think it was kind of, I, I like the memory of it today, but I, I, I would be lying if I said it would appeal that much to me today in that sense. Maybe just because you maybe need to get into it in, in, in a way. I don't know. But, but, the, I, but I, I do remember the thing with the imagination being a really cool thing that you could just make stuff up in your head and people would actually be listening to you and really want to come back and play some more. So I think I like that thing about it. That makes a lot of sense. So now we need to get. So how did you pick up guitar? Well, that was um, uh, I was joining. Uh, I think it's called the Scouts. Is that a thing as well? In, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, they they always the, the the group I was in where and when you went to camps and stuff, they they played punk music. And, oh, okay. Uh, and the punk music in, is, is a, uh, I think I mentioned that before, but it was a, a Swedish ba band that mixed uh, folk, Swedish folk music with, with punk. And I, I was struck immediately that I was, oh, you can do this. And I, I remember really liking the mixture of it. And it was the first, you know, I, before that it was all my mother's music, basically, or father's, I should say. 
And uh, so that was around, it must have been 15 or 16. And uh, after I, I realized that you could play that kind of stuff yourself, and I, I picked it up and started to learn really basic chords and, and uh, basic songs. So that I would say punk music was the first big influence on the kind of rock or metal side to it. And then how how do you think you got more into metal? Was there like any heavy metal band that was kind of like an aha moment for you? I guess, I mean, when you start out playing guitar, I, I'm guessing for most kids, when, when at least, I mean, kids back then at least, uh, it's hard to miss Metallica, I guess. Uh, that right. you, you, you start playing their songs. I mean, it's kind of mandatory almost. It is mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> it's like country music for yeah, metal. Exactly. Artists. So, so I'm, I'm guessing, but 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 they were not an influence. I mean, heavy metal as such was never to my musical. Of course, I'm influenced since I learned to play the songs, but I, I didn't really like that kind of. It was more Swedish punk music and also uh, more actually Green Day or, or or those kind of bands as well. So Nirvana was a huge thing for me as well. So if you take the bigger bands to mention. And that's, and I think a lot of fans of you probably would have never really guessed that you'd have an influence from grunge and punk. No, well, at least because for me, it's the that, that that's the kind, and and I, I think that that kind of music brought me on later on in, in a band that makes perhaps makes more sense, which is Muse, uh, in terms okay, of influence right. on us. So, so the, their their second album was, I would say, the definite eye opener for me. With the song microcuts that without that song i'm not sure we would have sound like this at all actually because that, that wow. kind of opera vibe and the, and the kind of rock music fit together without it sounding corny maybe i should say it's, it's, it's not yes. no cheese involved so to say and i, yeah. I really like that mixture so that was a, a, a spark for me that oh this is this is the, what we're going to do but you know with a proper opera singer we're going to do it full on and then, of course, the, the, uh, playing guitar and stuff are along the way up until the band started. The, the Django Reinhardt, of course, is a huge thing for me. And all that swing jazz from the 40s. I mean, I've listened to all of it as well. So it, it kind of came natural together with, uh, again, my, my mother's background of playing old kind of music. I mean, everything was played in, in the house. So now let's get towards the band, Diablo Swing Orchestra. How did you meet Pontus? It was in a um, it was in a town called Holtsfjord in Sweden, which used to have a big, well, if not the biggest festival back then. And the university there, I, I was I was studying uh, music management, and he was studying music engineering. So we, I think it was maybe the f- third day of school. Of school, we were we were in a, like a, I see a dorm, like lots of houses put together with students. Right. Yeah. Living yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, I, w- I think I was sitting outside with a guitar, or maybe it was him who was, was sitting outside. And I, we just started talking and, and we hit it off straight away. And I think we wrote our first song together maybe a couple of days later. And then from there, it started the, the band, so to say, I would say. <clears throat> so that, that first song that you guys wrote together, would you consider that to be a Diablo Swing Orchestra song? No, or was that it, kind of no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was, it was more. Uh, just playing rock influence kind of stuff. Those those songs uh, came a little bit later. The the that turned into the first demo. I think it was. Let's see if I remember correctly. It was Heroines, I think, from the first record. And uh, Wedding March for a Bullet maybe came later. I'm I'm not sure which one. Maybe Barbara Boogie came as well. I'm not sure which ones were there. But but from the first album, th- those can maybe a month or two later that they, they started taking form. And and one of the songs, the last song of the first record, Pink Noise Walls, was a really really old song for me that I've been feeling about for must have been at least five or six years prior to that. Okay. So it wasn't like when you met Pontus, it wasn't like an immediate thing like, okay, we're going to start this band. It's going to bring in all these different influences and we're going to play with all these different instruments and stuff. How did this kind of inception idea begin? Like, okay, let's try throwing in, like, were you just around different instrumentalists that were interested in being a part of it? Or did you kind of no, have to... It was the... No, the, the, I, actually, now when you ask, I actually have to sit down a little bit longer, perhaps, to actually remember, I actually talked to Pontus that how it came about. But 
I ne- I know I had some ideas, as I said before. I think that was that. Uh, this was in the autumn of two thousand and two, I think, or three. Anyway, the spring before that was the idea with the opera because that's what when I heard news that okay, I think it was their their Hullabaloo DVD that really caught me on when I would listen. I, I listened to that over and over and over again. And be, but prior to that, I've heard that they had the album Origin of Symmetry and that Hullabaloo DVD came out later. I remember being in France the first time I saw them actually live playing somewhere on on, on a really really small TV there in an apartment or a hotel. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, no, the, the idea with, uh, he knew uh, Johannes from before, and we had some ideas for the string part. And I actually just, th- this was before Annalise came into, in, into the band, and I just walked up into a girl I, who was singing on the streets in Stockholm called Lisa, and said, did you want to be in a band? That was basically <laughs> what I asked. And, and she, she, they, they, they played play some really experimental music, and she had this kind of, not, not in... Like Anne Louise, I would say, it was, it was maybe not that lead, but she was still having that kind of voice. And she, so she sang on the first demo uh, we released, or EP, <clears throat> and which we also recorded in the town we lived. And uh, after maybe, oh, sorry, the question with the, the other instruments you, you, you asked her. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pontus so, played the didgeridoo when he was into to, uh, to electronic music, so he showed me that whole world, so to say. Right. And uh, I'm guessing I'm the one introducing, as I said, the, the, the classical or opera side to it into the band as well. And with, with um, him knowing Johannes from before, and I knew uh, Andy played bass, and also Andreas, the first drummer we had from where I, when I started uh, prior to this in another town in Sweden called Karlstad. So what was it like uh, getting these other instrumentalists to come in? Because like... I imagine not everyone is into heavy metal, but maybe that's not a case in Sweden. Maybe everyone is into heavy metal, and it wasn't an issue for you to get people to understand that what they were going to be doing was going to be presented in a metal sort of context. Uh, was everyone just kind of on board and understood what you wanted to do, or was there ever a time where like, you kind of had to really get people to try to understand what you were making? Uh, I, I would say uh, that one of my strong sides as a musician into is to make people enthusiastic about projects is maybe not the, the playing that's that's so sort of is, is my strong side. It's more songwriting and actually getting people on board and, and trying to make them enthusiastic about something that maybe has not been done before that much at least. So so I, I was just talking to these guys and saying, okay, no, this is going to be really cool. And I, I, I was working really hard with both promotion of it and uh, with, uh, to, to, well, maybe just telling them the idea, this is going to work, we're going to play the world, we're going to do this and this and this like, from the start. And, and for some reason, they actually believed me. So they were, I, I, I don't remember having to actually like persuade people that much to come on board. I think they, they kind of liked the idea. And then I, and I promised to take care of most of the heavy lifting, so to say, in terms of, of getting it out there. Right. Cause I, want, I feel like I need to backtrack a little bit now because uh, you said that you went to school for music marketing yeah, what was it? What what made you decide to do that earlier on? No, I mean, I, I for, <laughs> from the beginning, I'm I, I studied economics, like a, a normal sort of say education, and this was kind of an, a, another year of adding uh, the, the music marketing because I'm, I, I studied marketing uh, at the university, and then a year afterward, I also studying in terms of marketing, but towards the music uh, industry as well, uh, contracts and stuff. So, so it kind of was, uh, that's, that's the other part. I mean, I, I like music and I like Excel sheets. So that's my two passions in life. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this all goes back to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe the, the whole organization part comes from there. I don't know. But, but though, at least th- those two have helped me a lot in terms of, of um, well, making stuff work for us at least. I wouldn't say that it would work for any other band, but for us, it has been a, a, a good division between roles within the band since, uh, as I said, Pontus started to be a, a musical engineer and, and that has helped us as well. And Andy, the bass player, does all the, the graphic parts of stuff and he, he, so he, and he also works as that. So that's our professions when, when, it doesn't, when we don't play, so to say, in the band. 
I think that's totally a different dynamic than if it had been more like just everyone was kind of like session players. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we do have professional musicians in the band as well. I mean, the, the Martin plays the trumpet and, and, uh, and Daniel the trombone. Uh, they, they play in orchestras uh, for a living. So, so it, it's a mixture of, of backgrounds that kind of, uh, we would like to think so, at least that it, it kind of makes the sound because it brings in different experiences and different knowledge from different, well, d- different kind of, of uh, aspects of being in a band. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I, you said in a past interview that a lot of musical ideas usually begin for you as just rhythm ideas. You just take like a small rhythm idea mm-hmm. and kind of put, start putting them together. What, what, what is that like? Do you, cause it just seems like as a guitar player, like things should start on the guitar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, it, it's for some reason I always find it, I need stuff outside that does, does not come from the guitar initially to kind of get a spark of interest for me because when, when at least I sit down and play it's uh, it's common for me to feel like okay I've played this before I've done this before but if something else kind of like since I don't I'm not that good at drums but if I find a drum beat that, okay this is good this is something nice Some, somehow the things I play adjust to that drum beat and it makes it interesting to write again, and, and new ideas come comes up from that. And it, and it can also be other things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a a, a drum beat. It can also be a, like a concept for a song. Like this is going to be this, and it can be anything from the lyrics to the to the overall feeling of the genre or something like that. It can it can also just get me going in terms. Of, and then of course I write the stuff on the guitar. That's like my main instrument to write songs on but I mean, it, it kind of helps me get interested in myself and what i play and it opens well, up new doors so to say so to say well i like you talked about ideas basically being able to come from anywhere you mentioned how you had an idea that came from your daughter dropping a box and yeah, then it made like it a was. strange <laughs> pattern with the sound and so yes. is do, for you are you one of those people that you always like to have music or something on in the background, or do you actually take time to just enjoy silence and like listen to the universe and hear the sounds around you and kind of like you're searching for inspiration from that? It, actually, that I, I thought about that recently that it, it goes in cycles uh, because when I've written for an album, I always feel a little bit drained in terms of ideas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is kind of common for, for, for bands as well. But anyway, so after that, I always feel that I kind of need to fill up the idea pool again, so to say. That, and then I actively start to listen to, to everything. And that, that there, there are no boundaries on what I don't listen to. It's, it could be black metal. It could be schlager. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. And, and that, that period of time could be anything from, from six months or up to three years that I, I, I need to build up an idea of uh, new ideas comes in from what I listen to. That, that doesn't, it can be films as well. It doesn't have to be music. It could be, but I, I wouldn't say that I sit and listen to the <laughs> silence to get the ideas. I, I, I wouldn't say that. It's, it's more an active research phase for me. For new ideas and and to just to get things to draw inspiration from because if I if I would go back to I mean my main uh, pool that would be within my youth because I I don't have the time today to listen in the same way I would say to music like I can sit for days maybe not days but at least a long period of time in a row and just listen to music and really get into it and it's harder today and also with the way we consume music today on Spotify and stuff it actually kind of disrupted that way of listening to music for me as well. So I, I'm, I'm trying actively to get back into it for a period of time to, to fill the pool of ideas up. But you always, uh, you've talked about how you guys usually write things down, right? So you are able to save your ideas, right? For, have you ever had that synchronous moment where something that you're working on right now just some, somehow works with an idea that you would worked on four years ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a good um, example of the uh, on the new record. It's a riff that uh, Pontus wrote for. Uh, uh, it was Pandora's. It was supposed to be on originally, because that, that, that and that 
Griff have stuck with us, or at least with me, because I, I always resonated with it in a way. Okay, th- th- this is going to be a really good riff. It could actually open up a concert as well, because I, I, I really liked it. But for some, we could not get the, uh, we could not get the, get it done. I mean, the, the, we had no chorus that we thought worked. We, we tried with different. I mean, from I remember it was in, it was crossed with together with uh, what's it called justice for saint mary for from the the third album as well and it, it's been mixed with so many of different ideas but we never got it to work but on this record we actually got it in there i'm really happy about it so that was that was an example that oh now it works this is the way <laughs> that's awesome yeah i mean I'm, I'm guessing that's that's common as well that you as you said you have ideas in, in your drawer that you think okay the, oh, this is never going to work and then all of a sudden that verse or that chorus just pops up and, and, and fits perfectly. That's, that's, yeah. I, I have this question that I got uh, sent in because one of my previous guests, he is a big fan of you, and he has a band called Cirque du Mask, and I, I asked him if he had any questions for you, and he wanted to ask about, uh, w- have you noticed a, a rise in uh, non-contemporary instruments in the metal genre? Like with Rivers of Nile, they're playing with saxophone in like a tech death kind of a setting. And that's just one of the ways. I mean, there's also bands like Igor going on. Have you noticed this? Or have you, have you paid attention to it? Because I think, I think you have, like we can attribute you to being one of the influences for that happening today. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I, I was... If, if we're an influence of it, but, but if, uh, yes, I've noticed that, that, that it has broadened up and uh, a fragmentation of, of what it, metal is is getting smaller and smaller pieces, so to say, what, what you actually can put in there and, and the subgenres and such going on. But, but I, I think it's a nice um, evolution of, of uh, heavy music because, in my opinion, I mean, if you take brass, for instance, and that's one of the meanest sounding uh, instruments, like if you take a trombone, we did that on, the, on, on this album. We actually put distortion on the trombone and, and actually made it it's a completely different sound wow. of the riffing because of it, because we've talked about that for so long, but on this album, we actually made it work. So it, it, it sounds like, uh, because we kept the breathing with, uh, with the distortions, so it sounds like Darth Vader is in there doing this thing. <laughs> If you put put it on loud enough, you could hear the, the breathing as well, and it becomes part of the sound. So I'm really happy if if, if other also noticing that the, this is a, a good thing that you can find inspiration. It doesn't have to be a guitar, and 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 also not in a gimmicky kind of way. Uh, in, instead of actually getting professional musicians or really good musicians in there that that actually adds to the to the to this their sound and stuff like that. So I, I think it's a, a good evolution if you bring in other instruments and can get completely new sounds out of it that in a, that can be really exciting to listen to. That that kind of leads me into my next question you said about like not being a gimmick. Uh, is this something that you guys sometimes need to talk about or do you, do you feel like it you naturally avoid it? No, I mean I'm guessing uh, of course with with our name I I know that uh, I I I've answered it in previous interviews and I I read it in 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 uh, in uh, reviews that a lot of people th- from the name and when they hear maybe one or two songs from us they think that it is just a gimmick thing with the wood okay it's it's uh they 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 play swing with distorted guitars basically and that's our thing you know but but for me the the swing or the the name just wants to to create a framework for us to work within in terms of i mean we we like danceable music in terms of being the, the swing, and we like the, the hard rock, and, some, and that's the Diablo, and then the orchestra that we put in whatever you know kind of instrumentation we think would fit the song. And I mean, I have answered before in, in a way that, that it's, it's not just well, to be funny we try to do this. This is our way of, of portraying heavy music or, or kind of heavy music at least. And and we we honestly think that like a, a, a solo on a violin or, or a cello is much, at least for me, more interesting sounding than I, just another guitar solo in, 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 a, in a song, you know. That's just my opinion. I mean, I <laughs> I like very few guitar solos in, in songs myself. And that, that could be because I'm not that good at playing them, but also I, I, 
they tend to be a bit boring to me at least. Well, and I think what it's also it's been done. Yeah, right? exactly. Like we've heard and, it. And, and exactly, and and that's a big motivator for us. That if if we feel that okay, this song has been done, it could be by us or anyone else. We want to add a new twist to it. And as you said, it, I mean, if you're going to do something new with a guitar solo, I mean, that's going <laughs> to the hours I need to put in to come close to that. I mean, I don't even have that left in my life, I feel, to <laughs> add anything new to that uh, genre or that, uh, what should I say? I mean, the guitar hero, hero thing, is it's been done, as you say. Right. Uh, I wanted to get back into the writing process for you because uh, you talked about how you really prefer – to usually write in A minor, yeah. Uh, but but sometimes that has to get transposed to make make uh, to compensate for the vocalist, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the, the A minor parts comes. I think that's uh, largely due to the fact that I, I play a seven string, and and when you drop that one, it becomes A. So and yeah. when you write riffs and stuff, so of course. Actually, on this record and also the upcoming, the next album that's not even recorded yet, well, because we started writing for that due to COVID and stuff happening, <laughs> and um, I naturally actually started to play on other guitars just to get away from the way of writing on the seventh string in terms of riffing, because just it, it presents challenges because I, I can't do the same things I usually do, so I try other stuff just buying guitars just to get them tuned in a completely different way and, and keeping them like that. Okay, now I'm going to write in an open E chord or whatever just to tr try it out, sort of. But but normally, yes, it's in, in A minor due to the fact what, what guitar I normally play, my main guitar, so to say. And when you ever need to, like, transpose a song to a, a new key, mm -hmm. is that... It, it doesn't like it sounds like oh yeah I could just like put my capo on my guitar but it can't be just like that. Do you ever have to like rework phrases so that they yeah, actually yeah. sound right? That that was that was a thing for this record. And it's going to be even more meticulous for the next one. That that we 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 put the vocalist first. When it was uh, it could be me or or Christine or or Martin or or Johannes oh. for this record. I think we, we're all having leads in different and we. And we actually really, really try to find, okay, which is the best key? And then the, the riff I talked about earlier, the really old one, was in A minor, actually, from the beginning. From, but then we, for my voice, since I'm singing that song, we need to put it down uh, a tone to G. So the, the guitars are down tuned to drop G, G instead. So it was a mess recording it due to the fact that for the bass, it, it sounded really, really muddy for a long time before we could actually make that work and actually be audible. Okay, so it's also part of the production as well. Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, <clears throat> with your last album, Past to Fisticuffs, uh, you were you apprehensive with it coming out because you guys had a new vocalist on it, and that's a big deal for a band. I mean, it's not like just replacing a drummer or a bassist or like we're all going to notice when there's yes, a new yes. singer and so obviously you ha were worried about how the album was going to be received and it was received really well really well uh with this album coming out is there anything new about this album that you feel kind of apprehensive maybe kind of worried about how people will, will receive it uh no, because this is actually the first time that we are the same crew for two records in a row, because we always shifted something between records before. And uh, uh, so, not in the sense that it's, I would say that it would be more that we're curious in some than, than that, you know, worried. Because the thing is that if, if we would worry too much about this is not the kind of music you should play <laughs> in terms of worrying what people would think, because we have that, I mean, we, we normally talk about this this rule of 80-20, that 20%, no matter what we do, is people will not, 20% will not like it of the old fans, I would say. It's, it's almost like a, a natural law. And at least if you read the comments or if you read the, the reviews or feedback. So, uh, I wouldn't say we're we're worried. We're more curious that okay, what are people gonna think about this? Because we, we we're trying to to do something new with each record and 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 challenge people a little bit and ourselves, of course. That okay, what, what do you think about this? And and that's gonna be we we think it's gonna be fun to read the reviews of this album because for Pacifisticuffs, uh, this is actually a conclusion we draw in in hindsight that we were not really ready 
songwriting wise because that album contained eight new tracks and four interludes and one old track from 2014 and this album is 13 completely new tracks and no interludes so it's it's really really heavy in terms of, of, of a lot of songs put out there so I, th- I think it was like a Maybe I said that when we noticed, okay, this is going to work with the, this new crew. And then, then we felt the joy of writing every, everyone again, because Martin has contributed them for this new album with the whole song by, his, by himself. And that has not happened before. So it's going to be interesting. We're really curious of what people would think. I mean, we, the, with the single we put out, it's been way, we actually thought that more people would hate it than at least what people have said online. Really? That's, yeah. that's interesting. No, but it's, it's it's a song that maybe it's it's a kind of tongue in cheek song in a way, but but maybe you can draw comparisons to to Bedlam Sticks from our second album, and that's definitely not most one of our most popular songs if you look at online streaming and stuff. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I see what you're saying there. Uh, with this band, you, you guys have always approached touring like it's a paid vacation because you guys all feel like you, you have your own jobs, your own lives, everything like that. This So when you got, go together to go on tour, you talked about it being really like a paid vacation. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So did do you, in the past, when you went on tour, because obviously that hasn't happened recently, uh, do you actually manage to take time to be a tourist or is there no time? Yeah, we actually managed last time we were in Mexico, we got, I don't remember if it was one day or two days off, so we actually walked around town and, and had two two lovely people there helping, showing us around. And uh, But normally that, that's not the case because, I mean, we, we don't play that long tours. Uh, it's... Um, yeah, no, it had it has happened a couple of times, but it, it's not a, a, a common thing, I wouldn't say. I, we would love to, of course, but I mean, normally the idea with touring is actually playing <laughs> as much as right. you can, and as we, we don't play that much, uh, we, we really try to, to play as much as possible when you actually get out there, because being eight people in the band, and we're from different towns in Sweden, and we, I mean, we basically never rehearse, so the, the time we have together, we, we, we try to play as much as possible. Ah, uh, right. And it's also just hard to find like a day off on tour, right? Like that's a lot to ask for. Yeah, I mean, normally because the thing is that someone has to pay for it. <laughs> when, we, when we have a yeah. day off, we still need a, a hotel room or, or something like that. So and, and then you yeah. have to talk to the promoters and say, okay, we need an extra day. So normally, either you, I guess you have to pay it yourself, uh, or if uh, uh, or if. It, some of fits with the schedule somehow that we we'll arrive one day earlier in town or something. But and also us being away since since uh, we all have families and stuff back home. I mean to get too many days off on tour would mean more time away from home. Us just being on vacation. Yeah. So uh, it's it's you have to 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 think about that aspect as well. So I wouldn't say it's, it's a big thing for us touring. I mean, of course, we'd love to if we could bring families and stuff like that along, but that would be a huge entourage with eight people just in the band. <laughs> and then all the families, and then you have sound technicians, hopefully, and stuff like that. So. Goals. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> what do you see on the horizon for yourself right now? Obviously, that you're getting ready for the album to come out. I imagine you might have some more music videos or something, but what's on the horizon for you? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the autumn now and, and the start of the winter because the, the touring part of it will start in January. Uh, I think it's on the 13th or something like that. I, it's not 100% confirmed yet, but the idea is to tour in, in, in Scandinavia uh, first, like do, do the, stock, then the, the capitals of, of Sweden, Norway, uh, Finland and uh, Denmark first, and then maybe add some other towns as well around when we're out there. And then we have Russia and Mexico uh, in the works, as well as Southern Europe uh, in April. Wow, that's that's a lot to be excited for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we of course, I mean, we, we try to not get too excited because, I mean, everything is getting postponed and, and cancelled yeah. and, and all the time, but, but at least we... we that's what we're working on and hopefully we'll, we'll sort it out and it will happen and everyone will 
be healthy and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's the idea. And then uh, also now, since it's, it's um, I wouldn't say downtime, but in a way that's since I'm doing most of the interviews, we're trying to, to record other stuff as well, like music videos, uh, as you said, and also small greetings and goodies too we can put out there along the way, so, so to say. We had a photo shoot last weekend as well, so bringing out some new photos for the next single. So we, we, we try to stay busy with stuff all the time in, as, when time permits. Right, there's no rest for the wicked, right? No, no, no. no it's, it's, it's a really fun ride, you know. I mean, we... Everyone in the band is in a good place, and and uh, as I said, we had a, we had a lot of fun recording the album. It's a good vibe within the band, so we, we try to you know enjoy that because uh, and, and make plans in terms of how we're going to write the next album. We're already working on it, as I said, because I mean we, we all have different let's say aspects that we think is more fun than others. I mean, for me, I, I definitely like the, the writing process the most. I mean, I, I like playing live. But the whole touring aspects with, with the airports and, and hotels is not the favorite part for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's that's the case for, for many bands. But but I, I really, really like the writing parts. And, and for this album, I also got more into the, the, the production part of it as well. So I'm, okay. I'm hoping to learn, uh, uh, use that knowledge for the next album when we know... I mean, you always make mistakes with albums, and then you think, "Oh, the next album we're gonna fix this," and then something else comes up. <laughs> it stays that way. But no, but I'm 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 really happy with things that are going with the band, and I'm I'm excited for this album to come out, of course. But for for that's normal for the band. I mean, we, we kind of already. I mean, we listen to these songs to death, and we I, mean, I shouldn't say we're tired of them, but maybe we're tired of the recorded versions of these songs. So we wanna record the new ones instead it's exciting to me it's, i'm just really glad that you guys are still going when when you when i first heard of you guys it was like a huge like aha moment for me just to go like wow like someone is doing this and it's it's artistic you know and uh yeah. i think you've made a huge impact in the metal community even though i don't think a lot of people talk about you all the time but it's one of those bands that when somebody else knows about you guys and then you meet someone else who knows about it's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. you know them too aren't they amazing and <laughs> people just gush over it uh when i let a couple of people know that i was going to be talking to you they were all just super super excited they just wanted to say that they're really really glad that you guys are still working on it because it's not easy to be in a band it's a lot of work it's a lot of dedication so just we all just wanted to say thank you so much for everything that you guys have put in over the years. I wanted to ask you, because this is a staple question that I always ask my guests, and it's kind of cheesy, but I still like to ask it. Yeah. What advice What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? It, it, within music? Any any dreams? Oh, <clears throat> well, I, from if, if I'm supposed to talk from experience in terms of actual advice... Uh, I, I, I'm gonna tr okay. Let's see. I'm, I'm gonna try not to sound like a, a standard answer because I do think about this a lot. I should say that okay. What what actually makes it happen or not? I mean, the first thing is of course that you should not listen to people what they want. Like like you, you can't make a survey for a okay. What what do you want? What the people want out there? You have to make an idea and stick with it. Uh, and then, and of course, you have to believe in it, and not listening too much what other people think of it. Of course, I mean, if, if you want to make be successful, that's of course a thing. But I think that people, as you just pointed out, if you bring something new to the table in some aspect and you stick with it and you and you 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 follow through on that plan, it will show. And I, I think you described it pretty well. With the 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 word about the band has been spreading slowly but i mean we've been around now for i think 17 years or something like that and i i know from fellow musicians in sweden that i had no clue knew who we were because in sweden i mean we're really not that known at all but i've noticed with this album uh, well Alex, single i would say not should say now that that it has been growing without us noticing it because the 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 impact this new single made in terms of, of streams that we noticed from just two weeks or something is we haven't been close to that before so i think that the, it's been 
um, spreading between people and, and they've been talking about it, but it's not like you say, we're not mentioned on the big, uh, like blabbermouth or stuff like that, but on the, it's an underground thing, but it's kind of bubbling all the time. So I think stick with your ideas and, and, and believe in them. And, and that, that not, not in a cheesy way that you can just do anything. They have to be thought through that it's a concept that you think might work for a couple of, in my case, uh, albums, I would say. And and uh, and uh, I think there was a, a Finnish uh, produce not no sorry um, composer uh, named uh, Sibelius who said that you should not listen too much what critics think uh, because no one has ever raised a statue from a critic or over a critic it's called. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that that's actually uh, what I like to live by that. Uh, Seriously, don't listen too much what people think about your music or anything else. You should you should um, do it anyway. And negative feedback, yeah, I think they should view it as just al- algorithm drivers in your feed or whatever. That's that's how you should view negative critics on, of, of of your work. That's a great way of putting it. Al- algorithm drivers, uh, they're always going to be there. So just don't worry about the fact that they're going to no, be there. No, and and you should you should. <laughs> Use them in a use them in a way that because they're gonna write and they're gonna feed all the algorithms on social media that's gonna drive other traffic to, and they, they, let's say Facebook or YouTube. Or if they complain and you answer them and they complain again, then they're just gonna feed the algorithm. Oh, this is a popular post. We're gonna post it on more people's pages. That's how you're gonna, <laughs> no, that, that's how it works. So that's how you yeah. should view them. Nothing else. Yeah. Absolutely. Wise words from someone who knows, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know about negative feedback because <laughs> I think all bands, if, you, if you've if you been around for a little while, you will get it for sure. Definitely. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Yeah. Uh, since we never played in Canada, I would love for people to, to tell promoters over there that we should come and play because I know that we <laughs> get asked a lot on on Facebook and and through emails and stuff that we should come and play, but since it being overseas, uh, it's been hard to combine with with uh, with us playing in in, in Mexico because uh, like you, the US is in between and the paperwork to get into the US is well <laughs> not that yeah. fun. So I, I don't I don't think it's the same in Canada. Uh, I don't know because we never play there. But if you bug local promoters. Uh, we will do our best on our end to come there and play as well because we love to. I mean, Devin Townsend is from there, so I mean, we have to play. <laughs> it's it's you know it's funny that you bring that up because Devin Townsend it's it's also one of those perfect examples of why it's kind of sad to be a Canadian artist. Like Devin Townsend would go and play the uh, I don't know the Royal Albert Hall in Australia, isn't that what it's called? Or he'd go play a giant uh, arena in Japan or Europe. Yeah, yeah. But here in Canada, I saw him in Kelowna, which is an hour north of here, at a mm-hmm. small club, which wasn't what was not completely packed, and it was just a small show. And he said that it was his first time back to Kelowna in ten years. Yeah. yeah so just yeah. to think, like here in his own home world, he's we're really not putting him in the big arenas or anything like that. So I think it's just something wrong with Canada, and maybe our promoters are all just. I don't know, out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, another, another band, Unexpected, is, uh, well, it was from there. I don't, they're not around anymore, as I've understood it. But uh, we met them when they played with Opeth over here as well. So there was some cool stuff coming from Canada, but but maybe like in Sweden, are there a lot of musicians there? Would you say that? Like, uh, I would say that there are a lot of musicians, but they all have gotten jobs and given up on music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my advice, and stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> what what is like? Why is Sweden? I don't. know, It seems like Scandinavia. It's undeniable that you guys have had a huge presence in metal. I mean, if you could just speculate for a second, why do you think that is? Well, the the most common um, uh, explanation that's been given. I know that it's kind of a official version. Uh, is that uh, two things? You you have the weather here, like it, this. The half a year is really black. That kind of forces, or in winter time, forces people indoors. Yeah, into the jam spaces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 I mean, that's one of. The, if you're not into to to uh, sports, music was kind of the other thing. And 
maybe that's not the case today. But if you but if you look at the, the generations that have shaped the, the, the reputation that Scandinavia and Sweden has gotten, was that there was this music school like that was funded by the government. So everyone could come there and play, and it was like really, really cheap. And they provided rehearsal spaces, and they they made people being able to start playing. Of course, with with the, the society has gotten worse, like I'm guessing everywhere else. So this has been cut down on budgets and stuff like that. So I'm not sure that's the case anymore as much. But since the kind of I'm guessing that when you have a, a, inher- a heritage from a country that say that a lot of, of good musicians come from Sweden, it kind of fills itself in a way, like a, a prophecy that kind of writes itself where it's in. Right. And yeah, uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, if you see, I think just the same with, I'm guessing with, with football and all sports that are big in a country and you, you get your national heroes and you, you, you grow up and say, okay, I can do that too. So I'm, right. I'm guessing that those those components at least had a, had a say in the thing why it's happened, and I'm guessing I mean since we're the same as in in, in Finland, there's also a huge metal thing, but they have a much better home market for metal for sure. I mean they, mm. they are the, the metal music in Finland are on 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 on, on the equivalent of, bill, of Billboard lists and stuff like that in 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 the nat- in in uh, the natural lists, so to say. Of, uh, Right. It, it is, is, uh, seems like Helsinki might be the most metal place on the planet. Uh, yeah, it could be, it could be. And, and, and the thing is that we haven't played there yet. So that's, that we're really excited to come there and play finally in the, in 2022. Awesome. You've been listening to the peach pit. I've been here talking with Daniel Hawkinson from the band Diablo swing orchestra, their new album swagger and stroll down the rabbit hole comes out on November 2nd. Daniel, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Yeah, sure. It was nice. Thank you. Bye-bye.